What's up everybody, Tech Checker here. Today we are going to do a little diorama tutorial project. Uh, we're going to take and uh, add some uh, mortar into my brick. Uh, and it's a pretty easy process. Um, so we're just going to get right into it and show you how to do this. Now the supplies that you're gonna need for this, the things that you absolutely have to have, uh, is sheetrock compounds. So basically the stuff that you use for fixing holes in your walls, uh, mudding and taping, so some, some construction materials there. You're going to need something to be able to pull the, scoop it out, spoon. I've got a, just a little putty knife. Uh, you are gonna need a stir stick and you're going to need some sort of a tool that you can use to basically press that into the uh, grooves. Optionally, you'll need some black paint and I'll explain that in a little bit. And then you are going to need some sort of a clear acrylic, uh, prefer preferably a matte coating. Uh, and then uh, a plate or some sort of container to mix the uh, uh, sheetrock compound. Now, uh, you don't have to, but what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of paint in it so that it uh, doesn't dry stark white. Uh, if you want it stark white, then you can skip the process. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put this camera at a better angle so you can see. Alrighty, so first things first, before you even get started, um, you do need to make sure that you seal your project. Um, and you're gonna use your uh, acrylic, clear acrylic. I've already done this, but you're gonna wanna start this, you know, at least one to two days beforehand so that it gets time to dry. And I'm not gonna show you, show you necessarily how to do this. Uh, it's basically just like using any spray paint. You want to stay 12 or 6 to 12 inches away from your from your brick. Um, test it on a piece of foam. If you can't find this exact one, and I'll post a picture of it, just to make sure that it's not going to eat away at your uh, paint and um, foam. So you're going to do this. Get it on every side that you're going to be putting the mortar in and let it dry completely. You don't want it to be tacky at all. Make sure you do really thin coats. I did two full coats on both sides of this. Today we're just gonna do the one side. So once you've got that done, uh, then we're going to grab just a little bit of this sheetrock mud. And you don't need a lot, especially, like I, I've got this really small project. Throw some of that in your plate, and then grab your stir stick, shake up your paint, and we're just going to put a little bit of black. And this is going to tone down the color of the paint, or the uh, joint compound, so when it dries, it's not so entirely white. Because I'm doing a little bit of a, an aged look for this, I, I don't want it to look all white. If it does, if you get it all, you know, if it's all dried and you find, oh man, it's way too white, um, then you can just go ahead and add a little paint afterwards and um, age it out a little bit. So once you get that good and stirred, and depending on how dark you want it, um, you know, you'll know when it's all mixed in. Then the next step is really, oh, I almost forgot to mention, before you start, you wanna have a damp cloth because you're gonna be wiping away some of the uh, excess. And then you're gonna want to have a dry cloth as well, just to, um, well, one, to wipe your fingers because this gets messy and then uh, wipe off any excess as well. So basically all I do is I just grab a little bit. Let me make sure this is on camera. Ah, it is. And I start on one end and I just kind of push it into 
my edges or my my um, grooves. And don't worry about it being messy. This is going to be messy, and that's what the damp towel is going to be for because you're just going to wipe off the excess. Um, this stuff dries relatively slow, so you can do relatively uh, large um, sections at a time. But the idea here is, is you just want to fill in all these cracks. And when you're doing it, it doesn't need to be perfect as you as you initially put it in because wiping it away is going to um, sort of give you that nice finished look. The other thing that's cool about this is you're also going to, once it dries, it does leave a just a little bit of a white, or in our case, it'll be slightly gray, um, uh, film or, or, you know, I guess a, a kind of a white film, yeah, around throughout the brick. And that gives it kind of that authentic brick wall look as well, which is kind of cool. Alrighty, so let's just show a quick close up if I can stay out of my light. So essentially this is what it's going to look like. So it looks kind of messy right now, but we're going to wipe this away. So I'm going to take my trusty damp paper towel and I'm just going to lightly wipe away. And you know, I found before I start wiping, sometimes I like to just take my scraper and scrape along the top. That way then, and when I'm wiping with my towel, I'm not getting so much on it that I have to keep wiping and wiping. But I just take my towel and I lightly wipe until I get all the excess off. And if you do uh, indent any of your bricks, you may need to dig in just a little bit more just to get those uh, that excess out if you don't want to have it too deep looking or uh, too messy looking on those particular deeper ones. <clears throat> but basically that's it. So here's what it looks like. I will post a picture when it is done, but once it dries, this is obviously going to lighten a little bit and you're going to have a really cool looking brick wall with mortar, just like the real ones. And as a note, the reason, the reason that you want to use this clear coat is if you do not, what will happen is your joint compound is going to start uh, softening and liquefying your paint. And it's going to start mixing that paint into your uh, mortar. And so if you're using a red or a, or a brown or whatever, <clears throat> Your mortar is going to start getting brown or red and you're actually going to start pulling away your paint and you might start seeing the pink or green, whatever color your foam is, is going to start showing through and it's going to look kind of cruddy. It's going to look bad. So that's pretty critical in this particular um, technique that you have to do a clear coat of some sort to protect your paint underneath. Alrighty, so here is the finished wall. This is what it used to look like. I can get my light right. And here's what it looks like now. Now it's not dry yet, but uh, I will go ahead and post at the end of this video, I'll also post a picture of what it looks like when it is fully dry. Now one little tip <clears throat> that I use especially when I'm painting, 
And you want to just be careful doing this because there is the potential uh, that you could dry things too fast and they will crack. But I have this little desk fan. Let's see if I can make sure that you can see it. So it's just a regular old desk fan that you can get anywhere. <clears throat> and I use this to try and speed up the drying process because I'm extraordinarily impatient. So you can try that and maybe cut some of the dry time down um, if you want to see what it looks like the same day. But you're probably gonna wanna let this dry at least 24 hours before you're gonna do anything with it. And I say be careful with this because you could make, if you dry it too fast, it could crack and you don't want that. The other thing to note is using this drywall uh, compound, <clears throat> it doesn't flex and bend really. So if for whatever reason you're doing this on a project with really thin um, material, there's a potential that if there's any bend in that material throughout your use, that it's gonna crack and potentially fall out. Um, so, and that might actually give you a cool look, but just know that the, this stuff doesn't bend at all. All right, I hope that this has been helpful. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe, like me on Facebook, and until then, I will see you later. Tap triggers.